All right, welcome everyone. I am a comic book colorist and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is part two in a new series I'm doing called How Not to Color Comics. And it covers a lot of the common mistakes and things that I see all the time doing portfolio reviews or from students in my course or different things. Uh, a lot of things, most of these that I used to do when I first started. And, uh, and today we're going to talk about um, lighting and, and shadow colors, I guess you can call it. So I've got two boxes here. And on uh, the left, I'm going to show you what not to do. And on the right, I'm going to give you a better idea of how to pick colors, uh, lighting and shadow colors. So let's just say for the sake of uh, for this lesson that uh, this is skin, okay? And let's say this is my base color. This is sort of a middle, um, you know, nice middle skin, uh, skin tone here. So what I see a lot is the, and let me get a, just a regular, let's see here, is gonna work? Yeah, just get a regular soft um, Photoshop brush, nothing too fancy. Now, what I see a lot of people do is they'll go brighter in the color picker. I'm going to keep this open down here so you guys can see it. And then they'll they'll do their lighting here, okay? All right, and then they'll go, okay, I want a brighter one, so I'm going to get brighter, and I'm going to do this, and then maybe they've got a, a highlight, and they're going to make it really bright, and they're going to do this, okay? And then shadow color. Okay, shadow, get the darkest color. We're going to get darker, and then we're going to do some shadows. All right, so we have our highlight, our baseline, some middle uh, color here, and then the dark uh, shadow color. And you can see these all form a straight line, <laughs> basically vertically, pretty close to it anyway, um, in the color picker. Okay, this is not how lighting works in reality um, at all. Um, lighting is very complex. I'm not going to get into all of the, because I couldn't, there's no way. Um, I won't get into all of the different possibilities here and different scenarios. Is it uh, is the light white? Is it a colored light? Is it nighttime? There, there's a lot of different uh, things you have to keep in mind here. But just even under a plain, just white light, let's say our character is just standing in the sun. All right, I've got my base tone here. I'm going to do something else instead of just getting a lighter and darker version of the same color, okay? Because this looks very flat, it doesn't look very interesting, okay? So, and some of my color has bled over to this side, but we'll, we'll make it. All right, so I'm gonna keep my same base color, but we're gonna saturate this a little bit more. So I'm gonna pull it to the right, you know, that things get more saturated as you go to the right. And I'm gonna bump it a little bit toward the yellow, just a little bit. And we're gonna color this in, all right? And now I want to get it brighter, so I'm going to get even brighter. I'm going to bump it up even more toward that little yellow color. All right. And for my shadow, I've got a warm light source, so I'm going to go cool shadow. So I'm going to go into like a bluish color here, kind of low opacity. Let me bring this down some, and we'll do this number here. All right. This is already more interesting than this, just, <laughs> just to look at. Um, and this is just one way of many to color skin tones. But the point I'm making here is when you have something that's a base color, you don't necessarily want your um, light color to be that color, okay? Um, you know, is it coming from the blue sky? Is it coming from a yellow street light? You know, I mean, all of these things impact the colors you're going to choose, the environment you're going to put that, that character in. And what I did here is just a quick example. Now, this is a really ugly rendering. I kind of did this on purpose just to uh, prove a point for this. So, now what I did here is I had the same base color, a slightly lighter um, version of the same color, and then a brighter version of the same color for the highlight, and then the shadow is just a darker version of basically the same color. These are all very close to each other uh, on the color wheel and, and, and barely shifting here at all. Um, it doesn't look terrible. It looks a little flat. Um, it'll look even worse when you compare it to this one, which kind of keeps in mind those principles we talked about a second ago. So I've still got that same base color, but you know, I've warmed it up a little bit yellow. I'm getting even more yellow over here. I've got kind of a, uh, I used kind of a purplish uh, color, a low opacity to bring those shadows in. It's just more interesting. Um, and this applies to anything that you're coloring. If you, 
um, look at photos of things and, and, and color pick you know the the colors that you're seeing I think you'll be a little shocked at you know when you when you color pick someone's skin tone and it's not really that orangey peach color that you're used to seeing you know it could be any number of colors uh, if you haven't watched my picking skin tones video go back a few videos and take a look at that I talk more about it but but just to kind of prove a point here this is the the final version of this of this piece I was looking at actually fully rendered and I think the whole rainbow is in here um, <laughs> now this started with just a base skin color probably in this range here um, and you can kind of see on the color window just kind of an orangey skin color um, the highlights are, are very light and getting in toward uh, yellow and um, but look as you go across this gradient look at the color picker jumping all over the place so we've gotten some yellows there's some dark blues I'm shifting into some greens uh, if I go all the way over here, there's some reds and even some purples in here. Okay, so we literally have covered the spectrum <laughs> of the rainbow here uh, on this, just this one guy's skin tone. Because we had this yellowish light source from the right and then this blue light source from the left and you end up with these all these nice mixes of all these things. Now I didn't go through here picking all these colors. You get a bunch of layering effects and and as these colors blend you get all of these different combinations. But this is something to keep in mind no matter what you're coloring um, is to you make sure that you're shifting your hue. You know that's what this uh, uh, slider here on the right side of the color picker is, is is you're shifting the hue so no matter what you're coloring you know shift it toward the shift your lighting color toward the color of the light source so real quick just to kind of prove a point here or just to show something so let's say that I want to do this uh, uh, octopus in purple so that's my base color well I could just get brighter um, but I'm going to shift it a little bit toward um, the blue or the red depending on you know what my light is you know what if he's standing uh, just lit by moonlight you know and then it might be kind of a bluish color on top of that you know to to kind of sell that or maybe he's in the sun and so it's shifting it is shifting a little bit more toward the the pink and the, and the red here um, but it's much more interesting to use these colors than it would be if I had just gone and grabbed that purple and did this you know and you know and there, there might be times and places for that in some cases if your light is really white and you're looking for something if you're trying to make it drab on purpose but anyway hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, if you did subscribe to the channel I've got several more planned in this series so be sure to take a look at that uh, there's a link in the description to my coloring course which has 10 hours of, of coloring tutorials and how to's and how to do all this stuff uh, so thanks again for watching give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it see you guys in the next one